Hi, I'm Lawrence Edwards from Black Mountain Honey. Welcome to another episode of No Nonsense Beekeeping. Today, I'm gonna to review the Maysmore Polyhive. So I had a request from someone late last year to say, can you review the Maysmore Polyhive? And I said, unfortunately, I don't have the Maysmore Polyhive. I'll buy one later on in the year and I'll do a review for you. So that's what I've done. I've gone ahead, I've bought this direct from Maysmore, paid around hundred pounds for it, paid the full price all myself. It wasn't a freebie. And I'm gonna give you the full review in this video. So we'll talk about the Maysmore Polyhive. I'll talk to you about the bits that I like. I'll talk to you about the bits that I don't like. I'll give you a full top to bottom, run through all of the components that are in there, um, give you a little bit of a description about what they are and how they work. And then I'll just give you my general recommendations at the end as to whether it's a hive that I like or whether it's a hive that I don't like. So to start off, it's worth saying, Maysmore was one of the, the original kind of group of companies that went out and designed a polyhive. So they were one of the first people in the market. And this is one of the first polyhives that I ever saw on the market. It takes a standard national frame, but it's got interior national dimensions. And what that means is that the exterior national dimensions are considerably bigger than a standard national footprint of 460 millimeters by 460 millimeters. So the Maysmore kit, although they say that it's compatible with wooden kit, it's not really, because it's a different size. Although it's a bottom B space hive, so you can put other bottom B space units on it, like a, a wooden national, the difference in size means it looks a bit odd, but also I think kind of practically it's not very good either gives water a bit of a, an easy route in because it can sit on the lips. So I don't think this is compatible with a wooden national hive. Now the Maysmore polyhives are made out of poly that's 100 grams per litre density. That's considerably more than the standard kind of packaging that you get, but it's the lowest poly that's available on the market in terms of density. So it's pretty standard. Maysmore uses 100 grams per litre. I think Payne's uses 100 grams per litre. And then there's been further advancements. So BS Honeybees on their nukes, they use 120 grams. And you can really feel the difference. There's a lot more give in the Maysmore and the Payne's ones compared to the BS Honeybee ones. And then the Abello ones are 160 grams per litre. And they use a different steam molded injection process as opposed to the standard injection molding process that they use for these hives. Saying that, they're still really durable. They're still really easy to put together. I'll show you the assembly in a different video. Most of these components come flat packed. So you need to go in and glue and screw the supers together and the brood box. The floor comes as one and the roof comes as one. Now, polyhives, they're cheap. And I remember a few years back, it was around 2015, 2016, you could pick up in the sales one of these Maysmore polyhives for around 55, 60 pounds, full hive. Um, with the two supers in as well, the price of the poly has gone up rapidly year on year. And one of the real pet hates that I have with poly is that manufacturers lock you into their specification. And I think that's what Maysmore have done here. So my first impression and the first thing that I'll say is I'm really not keen on manufacturers locking you in. I don't like them locking you in through the use of a rebate. I don't like them locking you in through the use of unusual dimensions. I don't really like any unique design point that locks you into a specific manufacturer because then they have a complete monopoly on that market. And if you need to buy another 40 supers for the hives that you already have, you are at the mercy of that manufacturer for pricing. Whereas some of the other kit that I've got like the Suyente, I personally think this is considerably better design than the Suyente. However, the Suyente is compatible with wooden nationals. So when I go and buy new supers for my hives, wooden supers, I can pick them up for around 12 or 13 pounds a super for a wooden national cedar second quality super. If I had all of my hives on Maysmore and I wanted the supers and it wasn't a sale on, they're about 20 quid a go at the moment, maybe a little bit more now. So the differences are quite substantial and I'm really not keen on manufacturers locking you in to different, um, types and formats of hive, I'd be much happier if they all just work to a standard, whether that's National or Langstroth or whatever it is, nice, simple standard hive, and they all clump together and then you could make a really cheap hive that no one had a monopoly on the market. 
So I'm sorry, I digress a little bit. That's my pet hate with the maze more, and it's my pet hate with the pains as well. And it's maybe my pet hate with the new Abello that's coming out as well. But luckily, Abello are going down a slightly different approach and they're bringing out different iterations of the hive. So the new Abello hive that's coming out, although it's got the rebates on it and it does lock you into that system, they're still maintaining all of the old compatible kit. So they give you the choice, which is different from what Maysmore do, different from what Payne's do. They go into a new product and they stick with that product. And then you either don't get the design iteration or if you do, you only get one version of it and the old version becomes obsolete and you can't get it. Right, so back to the review of the Maysmore Polyhive. We're gonna go from the top down to the bottom and I'm gonna talk to you through all of the components first. So the roof, first thing to say about the roof is it's a telescopic roof. I know that's an American term, but basically it means there's an overhang on it. I really like that design on a roof. And I like it for one main reason, and that is that it stops any ingress of water. That's the big reason for it. The reason that I don't like it is because it adds to the additional footprint of the hive in all directions, which means when you're stacking hives up, it's not an efficient use of space, and you end up having like a 50 mil void in the middle of just space where two roofs connect with each other. So one point I really like about it, it telescopes down. The other point I don't like is that it kind of does that and it's, a, it's not a good use of space. So it's a pretty weighty roof. There's probably 30 mil of insulation on the top and then round the sides, it goes down quite considerably thinner. It's about 15 mil on the sides. But you don't really need the insulation there. You need it on the top. It's got an embedded hive strap. It's a gimmick. You don't really need that, but it's no additional cost for them to put that in. And I think that's just a bit of a legacy design that they've stuck with. It's got the branding on the top there. Um, what you need to say about all of these hives, all of the poly hives, they do need a coat of paint. You do need to get something on them just to prevent any UV degradation. So pretty standard roof, we'll continue our way down. Now, one of the things I like is the clear crown board. So it's ever so slightly translucent, um, but it's, it's essentially clear, you can see through. That sits on top of whether you've got the supers or whether you've got the brood box at the top and you can see down doesn't really work. It's just a straightforward uh, flat piece. That would work a lot better on a top B space hive. In order for that to work on here, they're just gonna glue the frames down onto it. So really you need like a, a crown board with a rim so that they've got the top B space on the bottom B space hive. So essentially you'd have it sitting about eight mil above like that and then the bees could move freely over the top of it. As it is, it's just, they've just chucked that in there, I think. It doesn't add a huge amount of value. And on my hive that I'm gonna use, I'm not gonna use that. I'm just gonna not have a crown board and I'm just gonna put my poly ash for feeder on there. I'm just gonna use that. All right, next thing to talk about then, the supers. And this is where that, that footprint comes into play. So it's considerably wider than a standard national super. And I'll show you the difference now. So you can see the difference there is considerably larger. It's strange that internal dimensions are the same, the external dimensions, once you take into account the excess of poly, considerably bigger. So they're not compatible with each other. I know Maysmore say they are, they're definitely not. Um, they're a different size on exterior dimension. Now that doesn't mean to say that in an emergency, you couldn't put a wooden super on top of this hive. So you can, you can kind of do it like that, but I don't like it. Like the, the, the B spaces between the frames do work. So you've got bottom B space, bottom B space. In between the frames, you'll have seven to nine millimeters, a single B space, but it looks a bit of a dog's dinner. Um, and then you'll get water sitting on these bits here and they can go into the hive. And it's not the end of the world. It's just not a nice design. So it does annoy me if they say it's compatible, definitely not compatible. It's a separate design. The only similarity is that it's the same B space, the bottom B space, and it uses the same size of frame. That's it. Now, apart from that, there are a couple of differences as well to the Wooden National. This actually takes 12 frames. So it's 12 frame design. So like I say, the interior dimension is actually identical to that of a of Wooden National. So you can use 11 frames plus a dummy board, or you can get the 12 frames in here. So you do get, that is a benefit that you get with Maysmore is you do get the ability to have that additional frame in the super and in the brood box. Now, another design feature they have in here that some poly supers don't have is the ability to add castellations. 
Now, castellations can make honey harvesting so much easier, and a lot of the polysupers don't have it. On the, on the maize moor, you just have a couple of slots and you can just pop castellations in, and then you pop your frames into the relevant spacing. So if you're the kind of person that wants to use castellations, you can do that on a maize moor polysuper and a maize moor poly brood box, although I wouldn't advise for castellations in the brood box. However, what they also have is an integrated poly runner. So you, you can use this straight out of the box. As soon as you've assembled it, you can get your frame in, pop it in, and it brings the frame up flush with the mating faces and you've got your bottom bee space super. So it's integrated. And what's nice is that because you've got the integrated runner, they don't stick it down anywhere near as much as if they did on say one of like a Payne's poly nuke, where it's just a flat piece of poly for it to sit on. Um, it avoids any damage and it, it, it makes the frame so much easier to pull out. So you can pull them out like that. They've got handheld on two sides. And again, this is something where I think we've really developed this in beekeeping over the last five or six years. I'd like to see handheld on all four sides because if I come to pick up that side, I can't get my hands in. I can only pick it up that way. And it's something that really annoys me. So in a, in a new iteration of this product, I'd like to see handheld on all four sides. Another thing I'll say, and I touched on this when I did the assembly video, is that I don't think you get quite as tight a fit with the assembly of this one versus say the Suenti. The Suenti really does stay together well. I don't even glue a lot of my Suentis, let alone screw them. The Maysmore ones do tend to work their way apart from what I've seen on, on other videos and advice from people. So you do need to glue and screw them, which means that it's a little bit more time consuming when you're putting them together. Obviously the Abello and some of the other products on the market, they come readily assembled. It do cost quite a little bit more. And the same with this one here, you need to paint it. It doesn't come ready painted. So there's a little bit of work to do. You need to make sure that you're painting your poly supers, you're painting your poly brood box, paint everything. And then you need to make sure that it's glued and screwed prior to putting any bees in it. So then the next super is exactly the same as we've just discussed. And then we get on to the queen excluder. Now the queen excluder is not a standard wooden national queen excluder because it's got the different size. So it needs to be considerably bigger. And again, this just kind of comes back to the point that I was saying. If I damage this queen excluder, or I want to buy some more queen excluders because I'm going to do some demo rays, for example, which is what I'm planning on doing on a lot of my colonies this year. So I'm in the market for 100 queen excluders, standard national size. I can pick them up for around £2.50 for a standard wooden national. These ones are about six quid, six or seven quid, because they're a little bit bigger. And I can't buy these from anywhere else except Maysmore. So they have a monopoly on the market, and it's just something that I don't like. I really don't like that. Uh, monopoly that they have because of the size that they've made everything. But I don't think there's anything malicious there. I don't think they've done it deliberately to target people to get them onto their format and ramp up the price, although that would be quite a good business strategy. It's just the way it is and you're just tied into the system. So this is standard plastic queen excluder. I've not used it yet. I'm sure it's fine. I know Maysmod do do really good plastic queen excluders. I've had some of the green standard ones off them before and the quality control is really good. The thickness is nice, that will last for ages. And I quite like a plastic queen excluder because they're really easy to clean when you get a good frost. Um, so I'm not dead against a, a plastic queen excluder, but I just don't like the monopoly on the size. So then onto the brood box, and there's not a huge amount more to say on the brood box that I haven't already said on the poly. You've got the same, you can put castellations in, you've got your embedded, uh, already molded plastic runner for your frames. You need to glue and screw all of the corners You've got 12 frames across and you've got the dimension that's not compatible with a wooden super. So if you wanted, for example, to go and do double brood on this colony, you need to put another Maysmore brood on it. You can't go and put a wooden national brood on it as well. You can't mix and match. It takes me onto the floor. At the back of the floor, there is a board and you can take that board out to turn it into a solid floor for winter. Now, what's really annoying here is that when you're doing your mic drops, it sits flush with the base. So if you were to leave that on and do a mic drop, maybe do some o, uh, oxalic acid monitoring, do your mic drop and then you take it out. A, it's quite difficult to get out, but B, it's just gonna knock everything off as you take it out. Sloppy design, really, really lazy design that is. Um, and, and it's just due to the fact that they've used quite thick Corex. What you'd ideally want in there is like a thin tray with some lips on the edge so that the, the debris 
can fall down into it and then when you pull it out it's not going to knock it off so it's just it's just a little bit lazy that is an easy fix change the crown board over and you've got a better design but it's just yeah i think that's a little bit lazy and it's not really very well thought through you've got your standard varroa mesh and i'm glad to see that it's a solid mesh it's not like a really cheap mesh so it's got good quality mesh and i like to see that it's screwed as well as a blob of silicon every now and again so really nicely affixed to the poly that's what we like to see now obviously this is a bottom b space hive but they give you that little bit of extra space on the floor which i do think is nice so effectively got a double b space on the floor they tend not to fill that up though from my own experience from other uh, poly hives and other wooden hives that also have that it just gives you that little bit of extra flexibility now what i hate and I really don't like it. And it's not to say that it's wrong or right, but I just don't like that excess of uh, landing board there. There's, in my mind, there's no need for it. You could probably cut off 20% of the weight and the poly from this hive by getting rid of that landing board. It would make it cheaper. It would make it more environmentally conscious. And I don't think you'd lose any functionality. So I really don't like the landing board. And then the final thing to say is that the entrance slot is like a standard wooden national entrance slot. So it's 15 millimeters high and mice and rodents can easily get into this hive. So you need to make sure you're using an entrance reducer or you're using a mouse guard over winter. If it's something else that you need to buy. You probably need to buy it direct from Maisemore because the standard ones won't fit. It's just a bit of a frustration for me. And I think the floor is really badly designed. I'd go as far as to say the floor is the worst element of this hive. Like it will work, but it means that I have to put additional work in to make it effective. The problem that I have with the landing board as well, which I forgot to say, is that when you're stacking your hives up, not only have you got the telescopic roof to add additional footprint to it, but you've also got that landing board. And that could be the difference between getting an additional row in your trailer or your truck. It's just not needed. So I like to see everything kept to as minimal footprint as possible. If you compare the footprint of this to a Suyenti hive, it's crazy how much smaller the Suyenti hive is. And the Suyenti hive's got its own problems, like that is an absolute dog's dinner of a hive. I'd go as far as to say the Maismore is probably better than the, the Suyenti, but at least you can get quite a few of them onto the back of your truck without trying to cut things off and make them work. So that's about it for the review. I've covered the main points. I've gone through from top to bottom, talked about the roof, the crown board, the supers, the brood boxes and the floor told you about the bits that I like and told you about the bits that I don't like. Now for my recommendation, would I recommend this to you as a hive to go out and buy? And I'd probably say, yeah, I, I don't, there's nothing majorly wrong with it in that it's not going to work. If you don't have any hives whatsoever and you're starting out in beekeeping and there's a really good price on the Maysmore poly hives and you want a national hive, as in it's going to use a national frame, then it, it's fine. It's a good hive and it works. Would I recommend it over some of the other hives on the market? Pro probably not. Um, it's, it locks you into that system, which is something that I really don't like to see. You're locked in, and then if you wanna add any of those other bits, so say a new crown board or a new queen excluder, then you need to go to Maysmore to get it, or you need to make it yourself, which if you're good at making stuff, then that's not so much of an issue. But if you're not, and you need to buy it from them, the prices could go up loads and then you're stuck in an incompatible system. The other thing that I'd say is that to get the best out of this hive, it needs a few modifications. So for me, I would chop off the landing board. I know a lot of other people. So if you've just got a hive in your back garden, keep the landing board on. If you're not moving them around, it will look nicer with the landing board and you can see the bees coming in and out. I've not got a problem with that. So people in your back gardens, fine, keep the landing board on. But you'll need to do a little bit work on the entrance in order to get it kind of safe from rats or mice or rodents and, and to stop uh, wasps rubbing it out as well. So you need to get some sort of entrance reducer and you need to get some sort of mouse guard as well. Apart from that though, it's fine. It's not the best hive on the market, but it's perfectly acceptable and you'll get many, many years of use out of it before it will need to be exchanged for something new. The things that I'd like to see Maysmore go away and develop and improve on this hive are, I would just scrap the floor, start again on the floor, maybe look at a poly underfloor entrance if you're going down that route. There isn't one of those on the market. A poly underfloor entrance would resolve all of those issues, keep it within the footprint of the hive 
I think that would be a really nice product and a, and a USP on the market. I'd also go with a slightly denser polystyrene, so I probably wouldn't go up to the 150, 160. I'd keep the same manufacturing method, so a standard injection molding, and see if you can just up it to 120 grams density uh, per litre, just to give it, make it a little bit more solid. You lose a tiny bit of insulation, but it's negligible, and it'll make it a little bit more durable as well. Now, I wouldn't say to Maysmore, you need to change that now to get it back to an ex uh, the exterior footprint of a national hive because I think it's too far down the road and so many people have got these hives that if you were to chop and change to a new format then you're almost doing a bit of a disservice to all the people that have already got these. So I'd stick with that exterior footprint as it is, hold 12 frames, but I would just try and maybe make the queen excluders and the ancillary items that go with it just a little bit cheaper. The roof I would say I don't like the telescopic roof, but I think for the, for the fact that I lose a little bit of space in my truck, it gives me the assurance that none of that water is going to get in up to the top to fall on the winter bees. So I probably wouldn't change the roof that much. Definitely not one of the areas that I think needs major attention. The only thing that I would change on it is that I would potentially make the telescoping effect a little bit more and have an offset rebate in there so I could feed fondant directly on the roof. In a similar way that they've designed their polynook roof, so you can feed fondant underneath it, I would just bring that telescoping material down a little bit further, and then you can use that roof to feed fondant. And that's about it. So not not too much, uh, too many requests on my wish list. Um, I would make those changes though. The final one that I forgot to mention is I'd put handhelds on all four sides of the poly. It annoys me when they're only on two sides. I'd like to see that on all four sides as per most of the other hives on the market. So I've finished assembling this hive now. I've finished doing the review. I'll get some bees into it come April, May this year. I'll run my bees in it throughout the whole season and I'll come back and I'll update this review once I've had a full year of having bees in the hive. So as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the bell so you're notified of every video and I'll see you next time.